The line had grown silent. Not a sound was uttered by anyone. Work proceeded as usual, but even the most of the engines from the past were now resigned. Everyone, it seemed, was in a state of perpetual surprise after what happened on the tunnel line. No one ever thought a single engine who hadn't been here in ages, effecting that kind of disappearing. Everyone was concerned about Shadow, who had made a single warning by Afton's ghost. Hearing a full tale then a warning and made the ultimate life form skull hurt breaking, it was a lot for the little hedgehog engine to bear, and though he tried to rid himself of his spirits, they remained planted firmly inside his mind. It was a long time before the inspector deemed Shadow fit for service again. When Shadow did return, he was placed on light duty far away from the line at Proven's Gate Works. Another engine was to be with him at all times, which, as time went on, made Shadow very dependent and worried of separation. One night, Shadow and Inky were working together at the junction tidying up the last of the day's shunting. The clouds was showing overhead. Nearly there, Shats! We've been working hard, we're sure to sleep well tonight. Shadow gave Inky a knowing look and Inky was ashamed. He knew that night time was the hardest time for him, when he didn't have work to distract him from his intrusive thoughts. I'll just finish this last line! And Inky set off for his work. Then the sky became blacker than black, so much dark, which made it hard to see. Soon, Inky was out of sight, and Shadow began to feel worried. Crucent head! But there was no reply. He rolled back to seeing where it was behind him, but there was no sign of a little ink devil. All at once, it felt like the clouds went off, revealing in a very bright moon, and all Shadow could hear was the sound of werewolves howling in the night. He looked back and couldn't see the station master at the platform. He felt alone, completely alone. Shadow quivered with depression. He didn't know what was behind in the distance. An eerie outline forming engine was standing in darkness. It looked like a red engine, and not just any red engine, but after. The ghostly engine from Leno. Afton stared at Shadow from the distance and smirked coldly at him. He rolled forward along the line, creaking and clanking as if it had been coupled back together from the tunnel he had been turned into. Then Afton bumped into the back of Shadow. Now Shadow was even more scared and he looked back and all he could see his face was horrifyingly evil. Shadow was petrified and he heard the sound of a loud whistle. <laughs> Did the wake away? Shadow raced through the darkness and after the door. Ah! He raced through the force, wailing and screaming was impressed on it, and after blues his crystal loud and more as the people experienced the most darkness toy of their life. Please get away from me. What do you want for this time?
music is going to be better. into the side and tired but traumatized in fear. Then a family a voice bellowed in the night. Shadow! Shadow heard something in the distance and through the bright night came Inky, his lamplight dissolving the image of Aptom's ghost like a whiff of smoke. All Shadow could do was cry and nearly sob. Inky realized what had happened and apologized profusely. I'm sorry, Shadow. I didn't leave you alone but for a few minutes. We're all done. We can go home now. So Inky coupled up the shadow and put it in front of his train as they set off. Shadow was inside the shed. Inky spoke to Sonico for a long time. Shadow saw him again, didn't he? Yes, it's getting worse. I don't know what to do with that. No one did. One day, Shadow would have to face his spirit's head on, but he hoped it wouldn't be in quite the same way as it had happened that night. The one certain night, just after the sound of a Hopping past with one coach in town can be heard, the flash of red can be seen, and then in the blink of an eye, Acton disappeared without a trace.